Did you know that improperly sizing your solar panels for a battery can lead to either constant undercharging or wasted energy, costing you time, money, and efficiency? Imagine investing in a solar setup only to find your battery struggling to charge fully during the day or even worse, failing to meet your energy needs at night. This is a mistake that countless people make because they assume solar panels and batteries are plug and play. The truth is, the number of solar panels you need to charge a battery isn't just about the size of the battery. It's a careful calculation involving factors like peak sunlight hours, system efficiency, and even how quickly you want the battery to charge. In this video, we're breaking it all down step by step to ensure you'll never make these common mistakes. By the end, you'll have everything you need to correctly size your solar system for any battery setup and maximize its performance. Do not forget to like and subscribe for our channel. Let's dive in. To start, it's essential to understand how solar panels and batteries work together. Solar panels generate electricity during the day, converting sunlight into direct current electricity. This energy can either power devices in real time or be stored in a battery for later use. Batteries act as a storage unit for your solar system, ensuring you have power at night or on cloudy days when your panels aren't producing much. The size of the battery you need to charge is typically measured in watt hours or ampere hours, while solar panels are rated in watts. At first glance, it might seem simple to match the numbers, but there's more to it. You need to factor in the battery's voltage and the solar panel's daily energy production, which depends on sunlight hours. Then there's the efficiency of the entire system, including the losses that occur in wiring, the charge controller, and even the battery itself. These inefficiencies can mean the system operates at only 80% to 90% of its potential, which makes accurate calculations even more critical. There are several factors you need to consider when determining how many solar panels you'll need to charge a battery. The first is the battery's capacity. A larger battery holds more energy, which means you'll need more solar power to charge it. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Your location and the number of peak sunlight hours you receive each day are equally important. For example, Someone living in a sunny location like Arizona might have six hours of peak sunlight per day, while someone in a northern climate like Germany might only get three or four hours. This difference significantly affects how much energy your solar panels can produce daily. Then there's the efficiency of your panels and the system as a whole. Even the best setups lose some energy during the process of converting sunlight into electricity and storing it in the battery. Modern solar systems are efficient, but most still operate at about 80% to 90% of their theoretical maximum. And don't forget your charging timeline. If you need a battery to fully charge in a single day, you'll require more panels than if you're okay with it taking two or three days. Now let's break this down into actionable steps so you can calculate how many solar panels you need. The first step is determining the energy your battery can store. For this, you multiply the battery's voltage by its capacity in ampere hours. For instance, a 12 volt, 100 ampere hour battery has a storage capacity of 1,200 watt hours. To make it clear, 12 times 100 equal 1,200 watt hours. Next, you account for system inefficiencies by adding a safety margin. If your system operates at 80% efficiency, you'd multiply the battery's watt-hour capacity by 1.2. In this case, that means 1,200 watt-hours becomes 1,440 watt-hours, which represents the actual amount of solar energy required to fully charge the battery. Then you calculate how much energy your solar panels can produce daily. If you're using a 200-watt panel in a location with five peak sunlight hours, the panel generates 1,000 watt-hours per day, 200 times 5 equal 1,000 watt-hours. Finally, you divide the energy needed by the energy produced. For our example, you divide 1,440 watt-hours by 1,000 watt-hours, which equals 1.44 panels. 
Since you can't install a fraction of a panel, you'd round up to two solar panels to fully charge the battery in one day. Let's apply this formula to a few real-world situations. Imagine you're setting up an off-grid cabin and have a 12-volt, 200-ampere-hour battery. This battery stores 2,400 watt-hours of energy. After accounting for system inefficiencies, you'll need about 2,880 watt-hours of solar energy to fully charge it. Using 200-watt panels in an area with 5 hours of sunlight, you'd need at least 3 panels to meet your energy needs in a single day. Now, let's consider a larger system, like a home with a 48-volt, 400-ampere-hour battery bank. This setup stores 19,200 watt-hours of energy. To charge it efficiently, you'd need about 24,000 watt-hours of solar energy daily, which would require at least 24 panels at 200 watts each. Of course, if your home is in a region with fewer sunlight hours, you'd need even more panels or a longer charging period. Optimizing your solar setup isn't just about buying more panels. It's about making the most of what you have. Start by investing in high-quality, high-efficiency panels that can generate more energy in less space. Place them in a location where they'll receive maximum sunlight and make sure they're tilted at the correct angle for your latitude and the season. Additionally, consider using an MPPT charge controller, which can optimize the energy flow from your solar panels to your battery, improving system efficiency by up to 30%. Regular maintenance is also essential to keep your panels clean and functioning at their best. By combining these strategies, you can reduce the number of panels you need without sacrificing performance. One of the most common mistakes people make is underestimating their energy needs. It's easy to forget about inefficiencies or overestimate how much power your panels will produce on a cloudy day. Another mistake is not considering seasonal variations. In winter, shorter days and lower sun angles can significantly reduce solar output so you may need more panels to compensate. Finally, many people neglect to properly size their charge controller, which can lead to energy loss or even damage to the system. Planning carefully and taking these factors into account will save you from costly errors. And there you have it, the complete guide to determining how many solar panels you need to charge a battery. Whether you're working on a small off-grid project or a large-scale home installation, Understanding these calculations will help you create a system that's efficient, reliable, and perfectly tailored to your needs. So, are you ready to calculate your ideal solar setup? Share your questions or your solar experiences in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and share it with anyone considering solar energy. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.